Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the Glitched Out Gaming Podcast, episode 14. Sorry about missing last week, it's just things were busy, people were unavailable to record, but we're back this week, and we've got a fun show to go over, and joining me this week, making his return back to the Glitched Out Gaming Podcast, it's Big Boss. Hello, everybody. How's it going, man? It's been a quite some time since you've been on an episode. Yeah. I think last time was in July or June or something like that. I do believe so, yeah. Huh. It was a deflate gate time, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. hashtag deflate gate. Still stirring up that controversy. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, been busy. I was on holidays for a while, and then, mm-hmm. uh, then I get back, and then back in school and working. and Yeah, yeah. life's busy. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we, we've got a, quite a fun show here to go over this week, and we're going to kick things off as we always kick things off here on the Glitch State Podcast, and that's go over what we've been playing this past week. And, uh, Big Boss, it's been a while since you've been on, so not necessarily just only this past week, but what have you been playing since we last chatted with you? Um, well, actually, I didn't get to do too, too much gaming this summer, mm-hmm. uh, Partly because I was busy and on vacation, although also partly because I didn't have too much drive to game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I tend to go through sporadic moments where I game more than others, but uh, actually, now that I think about it, before I went on holidays, I spent uh, most of my summer playing through the entire Halo franchise. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, through uh, Halo 1, 2, 3, uh, ODST, Reach, and then 4. So, nice. I'm all prepped up for Halo 5 when that comes out. Um, I uh, did play some Rocket League, mm-hmm. as per everyone's recommendation. I gave that a try. And such a simple game, mm-hmm. but so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a good example of what, you know, gaming is like. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be super complex and elaborate. Just a simple concept can go a long way. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, I've been playing uh, Smash on a semi-regular basis at a friend's place. <laughs> uh, he actually has an amiibo, mm-hmm. and uh, we, he showed me how that all works, and that's really cool technology, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, how that all little thing can do all that stuff, like, especially, you know, it shows how gaming technology is evolving in uh, ways that, uh, frankly, I would have never thought possible. Mm-hmm. So that's neat. And then, uh, other than that, um, as you might be able to guess, I have been playing Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, <laughs> I I wouldn't have guessed at all. <laughs> no, I haven't been playing as much as I'd like to, considering that came out the day before I was back in school. <laughs> so I've just been picking away at it. I've completed story missions so far. Mm-hmm. That's it, and I've been, mas- I've been mainly, you know, with a little bit of my downtime, just tackling the side ops and having fun gathering resources and stuff, so, um, cool. yeah, not, uh, haven't played as much as I'd like, I've been steering clear of any sort of spoilers at all, mm-hmm. uh, I've, I haven't even watched any, like, gameplay footage or anything like that, because I'm trying to go into the game as blind as possible, <laughs> Right on. so I can discover everything, right? Mm-hmm. And I've, I've specifically yelled at people who've started talking about their experiences and told them to <laughs> shut up and leave me alone. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it might take me a long time until I get to finish it, given, you know, school and work. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that's been uh, pretty much... But ultimately, yeah, I am enjoying it mm-hmm. uh, so far. That's good. I was a little concerned with the open-worldness of it, uh... Just because open world games tend to be very hit and miss in my books. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I absolutely love them. Uh, you know, like Elder Scrolls and uh, GTA. Mm-hmm. But, and then other times it's like, you know, this is cool. I just can't get into it. Like uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, um, The Witcher 3, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even Fallout has never, you know, it just hasn't been able to hook me. So. Mm-hmm. I, I had some trepidation about going into uh, MGS5, 
you know, would it be able to hook me or would I end up in a similar boat as The Witcher where just there's so much to do, I, I can't, you know, get into it. But nope, so far so good. So I, I can't complain. Cool, cool. What about you? What have you been gaming as of lately? Uh, as per usual, I've been, I'm still playing Kung Fury Street Rage. That <laughs> For a $1.99 game, that has given me so many hours of gameplay. I, I play at least an hour a day at this point. Oh, wow. And uh, last night I reached a new high score. Uh, as a, By last night, I mean Monday, September 14th at the time. I recorded a new high score of 568,640. Uh, I did save the gameplay clip of that, so I think I'll be uploading that in the near future, if not already before this podcast goes up. So look forward to that or go find it. Uh, other than that, I've been playing Until Dawn. I finished that up. How was that? It was incredible. Like, that game now has a very good chance of getting my game of the year. Oh, wow. Yeah, it... As everybody knows, I gushed about this on the last podcast, too, I believe, but, uh... Yeah, it's just so... Like, the atmospheric tones of the game is so great. The story is... So the story and characters are absolutely cheesy horror tropes, but oh my god, it's done so well. The gameplay mechanics are uh, done excellent, like the, the Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls type gameplay, but it's yeah. done really well here. The choices actually matter <laughs> for how you get through the game. Nice. Uh, at the end of the game, I had four of the eight characters survive, so I think I did fairly well for my first playthrough. <laughs> I'd say that's a passing grade, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, excellent game. Um, I'm probably going to go for the Platinum into it, which doesn't seem too hard. Just got to get all the collectibles and the various endings and a couple scenes you need to do. But yeah, I, I absolutely love it. I highly recommend it. As somebody who doesn't like horror, which I know like yourself, Big Boss, yeah. I would say still play this game because it is well worth it. Like, okay. it is an excellent, excellent game that deserves to be played. So if you ever get the chance, do play it. Do not let it pass you by. Excellent. I'll keep that in mind. And the last thing I've been playing this past week has been Danganronpa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls. I finally, finally got my copy last Friday. Um, yeah, I know, right? It was the sh shipping to the EB games I go to almost delayed two weeks. But like, oh, it was annoying. But I finally got my hands onto it. I've started playing it. I'm, I think I'm only into chapter two at the moment, if that, but, uh, Wow, just wowie, wow, wow, wow. Um, it is a third-person shooter this time around. The game sure. functions well. Like, it's okay. It's it's good. It's executed really well. The story is there, which is the most important thing. Like, I, I was kind of worried about it. I heard the developer talking about how he did focus, again, on the story. But I was like, oh, are they actually going to do it well in this new format? The answer is yes. Like, Already my mind is blown. There is... Your main enemies in the game are five children this time around. Like, the whole premise of the game is these five children are trying to take over the... Well, have basically taken over the city, and they're trying to kill off all the adults and make a city for children by children. It's creepy as fuck. Uh, the main character in this game is actually the younger sister of the main character of the very first Danganronpa, which was cool. You find out that she was actually not killed during the whole uh, big incident that happened that basically destroyed half the world. So you play as her. She's been locked up in an apartment building for the last year and a half. Uh, she gets rescued by a few characters from the first game. Uh, and your sidekick character throughout the entire game this time around is Genocide Jack. So that's uh, that's been really fun. <laughs> Having her as a sidekick. So. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. So far, so good. Loving it. I'll most likely talk about more of the game on the next podcast. So I do believe that's going to 
do it for our been playing section. Uh, I don't think I've been playing anything else, so let's dive right into the news. And Big Boss, why don't you tell us about some voice acting? All right, that's the one I didn't load up. <laughs> Hopefully no one starts talking. No, no. All right, the LEGO Dimensions voice cast has been revealed, and it includes Chris Pratt, Michael J. Fox, and Elizabeth Banks, as well as some others. Um, so let's see here from IGN. Uh, Michael J. Fox is reprising his role as Marty McFly in LEGO Dimensions, joining Elizabeth Banks, Chris Pratt, and more stars in the Toys to Life game. Uh, Warner Brothers has inter uh, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has announced many of the voice cast members for Lego Dimensions, with Fox and Christopher Lloyd re-recording lines from Back to the Future uh, for that portion of the game. In addition, uh, Pratt and Banks are back as Emmett and Wilde style from the Lego Movie, with Allison Brie and Charlie Day also providing voices for their characters from the film. Gary Oldman will serve as the main villain in LEGO Dimensions, called Lord Vortec. Uh, Community's Joel McHale, meanwhile, will, is providing the voice of XPO, the game's robot guide. Other notable actors uh, contributing to LEGO Dimensions include Peter Capaldi as the Twelfth Doctor, Troy Baker as Batman, and Irfan Khan from Jurassic World. <laughs> so, there we go. That is one hell of a voice cast for a video game. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other video games with that kind of star power. Mm -hmm. Very few. <laughs> I know, the only one that jumps to mind is Beyond Two Souls with Willem Dafoe and uh, <laughs> uh, Ellen Elf Page. Page. That's the only one I can really think of. <laughs> I mean, even like Call of Duty Kevin Spacey edition only had Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a uh, trailer for the game as well, showing off the voice talent. It's called the We've Got Talent trailer, and all of the names flash up onto the screen. Nolan North's in there as well. Nice. Uh, Steven Merchant's in there. But yeah, it's incredible. Even the GLaDOS actress is in there, and the guy who played... Uh, fuck, why can't I remember his name now? The guy uh, from Portal 2. Sphere, who helped you through. Why am I blanking on his name? The British dude. The Sphere. Who took over Glass's spot. Mm. I hate myself now. <laughs> Why? Oh, this is your game. Yeah, I know. One of my favorite games of all time, and I cannot remember his name at all. I not remember, you know, Metal Gear Solid characters or something. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to bug me. Uh, but yeah, that uh, that game is looking so fucking good. I cannot wait for uh, uh, September 29th. That's when the game is out. Oh yeah, J.K. Simmons is into the game as well, which I'm assuming oh, no, he's oh. re. I'm yes. Re <laughs> I'm assuming assuming he's reviving his role as Cave Johnson from Portal for that pack. Yeah. Wheatley. Jesus, I said go. Stephen Merchant too, but yeah, Wheatley. He's in the game. So, yeah, e everything about LEGO Dimensions is making me so, so very excited. And I'm already spending a shit ton of money on that game. I know I'm going to spend even more. <laughs> Big investment. Yep. Skylanders didn't get me. Uh, Disney Just... Infinity didn't get me. But this one has, so. All right. Well, let's uh, keep moving along here with the news. Going into our second story, which is everything announced at Sony's pre-TGS press conference. That's right, Sony held their pre-Tokyo Game Show press conference at, well, 4.30 a.m. my time <laughs> here on the uh, 15th of September. And wow, we got a shit ton of news out of this. And thankfully IGN has put all of it into one spot so we can go over it here at one time. So, first off, a new Bloodborne expansion got uh, announced. Its first DLC, called The Old Hunters, will be available on November 24th in Japan. A special edition of Bloodborne that includes The Old Hunters DLC will be available on December 3rd. I uh, just want to note with the dates that I'll be saying throughout this article, most of them, or all of them actually, are Japanese release dates. No actual word on North America or Europe release dates yet. 
So that's cool. Uh, did you play Bloodborne? I forget. Um, no, I haven't. Oh, I played a little bit. Okay. I. So this DLC does nothing for you at the moment. Then. No, just just because I didn't have the time to fully get into it, and mm. Bloodborne is a game that requires the time to get oh, in yeah. or in it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really you just pick up and play it. Mm -hmm. No, that that's not how those sort of games work. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I haven't had much time to play it, and then so you know, it's only so much you can do in like. 15 minute play sessions in that game <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right well next up we got gravity days and gravity days 2 announced for the playstation 4 that or as most of us over here in north america or europe would know it as gravity rush the one of the great vita games actually that i still haven't played all the way through mm -hmm. uh so gravity rush in the west uh, is coming to playstation 4 on december 10th for japan and in February 2016 for Europe and North America. So, yet another release for Fuckuary. Uh, Sony also announced a 2016 release window for Gravity Days 2. And showed off a new trailer and a 2016 release window for that. And that one's also coming to the PlayStation 4 as well. Cool. Uh, for Honor revealed a new hero, the Oni. Ubisoft revealed a new trailer that features the first playable hero in For Honor, the Oni. The trailer includes information on the hero's attributes, abilities, and gear. Look cool. That game is shaping up to be interesting. Uh, looking forward to hearing more on it. Agreed. That's one I'm, I've got my eye on so far. Uh, next up, we got some Assassin's Creed Syndicate DLC news. And that is that we're getting a Jack the Ripper story DLC. Hmm. So, cool. <laughs> uh, next up, Yakuza HD Remake was announced, as well as Yakuza 6. Woo! Two games we're probably not going to get over here, <laughs> because Sega hates localizing those games, apparently. So, in celebration of its 10th anniversary, Yakuza is getting an HD remake. The remake includes a demo of Yakuza 6, the newly announced Yakuza title for PlayStation 4, that's set to be out in Japan in fall of 2016. Uh, King of Fighters 14 got announced for the PlayStation 4. Uh, Square Enix announced Saga Scarlet Grace for the PlayStation Vita, along with its 2016 release window. So Square Enix had the balls to release <laughs> or announce a Vita-only title. Don't see that very often anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Bandai Namco announced and revealed trailers for One Piece Burning Blood and Gundam Extreme vs. Force. Square Enix also announced the next Kingdom Hearts compilation coming later this year and it is called Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Features Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance and two actual new episodes of games called Birth by Sleep 0.2 and scenes for Unchained X for the PlayStation 4. I don't so. get their like, this number system is pissing me off. <laughs> So Kingdom Hearts 1.5, I'm like, okay, fuck you. Kingdom Hearts 2.5, I'm like, fuck you. Birth by Sleep 0 0.2, fuck you. Kingdom Hearts 2.8, fuck you. Like, this is stupid. I, I need to link you to uh, Jim Sterling's Nitpick Theater because he covered that. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, we have something very in common on that one. Like, yeah. I, I love Kingdom Hearts as much as the next guy. You know that. Yep. <laughs> but the name... It's, it's like, and it's like... And when that other stupid one came out, like, 358 over two days, like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> you don't divide days by day. I don't know. Like, maybe it makes sense if I'd actually play it, but... Yeah, it's like, they're just, it's like they're just throwing darts at a dartboard filled with names and just putting them in. Yeah, it's like... I don't know. I, I feel like they chose all these numbers. Like, the moment they chose that 358 over two days, that should have been the sign that... They just want to fuck with us with numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure all the games and all this expansion stuff is great, considering I've only ever played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure all this expansion stuff is awesome. Yep. It's just very douchey name. <laughs> yeah. There was a rumor going around, too, of Kingdom Hearts 2.9, which still could happen, which, no. I'm, which I'm assuming is going to be the... PlayStation 4 re-release of Kingdom Hearts 2.5 and 1.5. <laughs> oh. 
Which I'm surprised they didn't already announce that. They brought over Final Fantasy X to the PlayStation 4. They could have done it with Kingdom Hearts as well. If, if we're on this subject, I just got to say, I really, really, really also want a Final Fantasy XII mm. PS4 remaster. That would be awesome. Uh, I, I never got to finish it back on the PS2. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like, I don't got much drive to dig out the PS2 just so I can go back to it. Yeah. But I enjoyed what I played of it. And yeah. So Square Enix, you know, like make that game and you'll have a little extra money from me. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I had to say that. Moving forward. <laughs> yes. Uh, Square Enix revealed their Minecraft clone or re- revealed a release date for it. And that Square Enix revealed that Dragon Quest Builders will be out on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita on January 28th, 2016 in Japan. Cool. That game looks fucking awesome. Like, seriously, fucking awesome. I cannot wait for that. I love yeah. Minecraft. I yeah. love Dragon Quest. Two of them together. Fucking awesome combination. I was going to say, given how much time you spent on Minecraft. Yep. Oh. And I, I'm still trying to get the fucking Platinum Trophy on the Vita. I still <laughs> haven't gotten the 100 Days Trophy for whatever reason. Oh. Weird. Yeah. All right, next up. <laughs> News that made me very, 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 very happy, and that's Dre- Jesus, Danganronpa 3 was revealed! woo And that's Spike Chunsoft announced that the next entry in the main Danganronpa series, Danganronpa 3, will be out on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. Now, normally I would say, buy the Vita version, because that's where you gotta buy it onto, but buy both, because it's Danganronpa and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> And next up, uh, we got some hardware news, and that's in a surprise move. Sony has decided to ditch the Project Morpheus moniker for their VR headset, and they have named it the much blander PlayStation VR. You well, know, it tells you blatantly what it is. <laughs> yeah, I- I'm fine with that. I mean, they name everything PlayStation something. PlayStation TV, PlayStation Now, PlayStation... PlayStation I. Yeah, so... I think this was something we all saw coming because they just can't call it project morpheus project morpheus seems like a code name for something that was a project they were working on yeah exactly now now that they're bringing it out we all know exactly what it is Mm -hmm. it's just you know what let's just name it what it is the playstation not or uh, playstation vr Mm -hmm. so it tells you blatantly yeah it fits with everything else that playstation has done now it's not a secret test project kind of thing that they were working on, and mm-hmm. yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I'm growing more interested in VR. I'm going to be honest. Like, uh, I'm still defensive, but I'm 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 definitely curious. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm with you. Like I, it's I something think... that I hope that like places like EB or Best Buy will actually get demo units in to try it out. Yeah, I really want to try this out. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm definitely curious to see how certain games will approach it. Like, mm-hmm. I'll I'll be honest. Like, out of all of us, I think I like first person shooters the most. Yeah. But I don't want to play a first person shooter VR. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a good way to get very sick. Yeah. But on the other hand, I would love to throw on the VR and play some Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. I'd love to throw it on and play. Imagine a mech game. Yeah. That still might be a little high-paced. <laughs> motion sickness. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I'd like so, any sort of RPG where you're like discovering a world like that, mm-hmm. you know, that would be a nice one to play in VR. Yep. We, we all know, though, the genre that's going to take over VR. Horror. Oh, God. First-person horror. Oh, God. Like, imagine <laughs> playing Amnesia. <laughs> oh, or slipper. You. <laughs> but yeah, that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, VR. That's uh, it's gonna be interesting. So next up, Dark Souls Three got a fixed release date, and that's while well, we have to wait a little bit longer in the West. From software has confirmed when Dark Souls Three will be launching in Japan. They did not put the release date here in the IGN article, so I, I cannot s- tell you. Hold on, I'm gonna click on another article. Hopefully, it doesn't make noise. <laughs> Damien Hetfield pops out at you. Uh, 
Bandai Namco has officially unveiled the release date for Dark Souls 3. Developer From Software's action RPG will launch on March 24th in Japan. That's a Thursday. So it's unlikely Dark Souls 3 will hit North America at the same time. And we've contacted Bandai Namco for more information. That's IGN who contacted Namca, Namda, uh, Bandai Namco, not mm -hmm. Lord X or myself. I, I don't have Bandai Namco's numbers, so you know. I can't just be like, yo guys, what's up? It's big mm. plus. <laughs> Alright, next up, uh, the Resident Evil game that everybody's been looking forward to. Capcom has announced Biohazard Umbrella Corps, a competitive shooter for PC and PlayStation 4 set in the Resident Evil universe. Okay. Eh. <laughs> they also revealed their new uh, 20th anniversary logo as well, which made me feel old to think that Resident Evil is 20 years old now. Yeah. yeah there was something else that came out recently, and I, I looked at the date, and I'm like, this is like... This is... 15 years old or 20 years old, and I'm just like, damn. Mm -hmm. Can't remember what it was, but it, it, it hit me hard. <laughs> Maybe it was the PlayStation release? No, it was something else. Okay. Something in the last couple of weeks. It might have been an album or something. Or a, oh, okay. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to remember it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up. Square Enix took to the stage to announce when Japanese gamers will get their hands on the fifth game in the sci-fi RPG series known as Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness. And it's going to be early 2016, I believe, February... Yes, February 25th, 2016. No. I want this game so badly. <laughs> They still don't have a specific Western release date, though at E3, Square Enix said that the title will come West mm -hmm. in 2016. So, yep. at least you get to look forward to it for next year. Yep. It's most likely going to be a fall game, maybe August at the earliest. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably guess around September. That mm -hmm. seems to be when companies like to put things out to screw over those of us who go back to school in September. <laughs> yep. That, that oh, game is going oh, to be... Uh, a <laughs> day, that game's going to be a day one buy for me. I Everything I've seen, the new trailer that they showed off there looks so fucking good. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be day one for me, um, but it's going to be one I'm going to be keeping my eye out on. It could be a day one if there's not a lot of other things coming out at that time. Mm -hmm. yep. it does, I've been looking for, I don't know, a certain game with a certain feel to kind of capture my attention and make me want to play it mm -hmm. the way that and you know looking back at it star ocean did that way back when with uh, till the end of time mm -hmm. and uh this one kind of makes me feel the same way yep yeah, it's because they're going back to being a classic jrpg and yeah. they're staying true to like the core series mm -hmm. unlike a lot of games like <clears throat> final fantasy 13 which straight off the rocker yeah. So, yeah, very, very excited for that. Um, new PlayStation 4 faceplates and controllers were revealed. Sony has revealed nine new swappable faceplates for PlayStation 4 consoles, along with four controllers. At long last, the transparent DualShock returns. <laughs> I'm, I'm still t very tempted to pick up one of those uh, 20th anniversary controllers this month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks so sexy. All just, right. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just looking. <laughs> uh, next up, PlayStation exclusive Slash 'em Up, Noah, was revealed. Uh, Koei Tecmo uh, showcased segments of gameplay for its upcoming Slash 'em Up, Noah, ahead of its PlayStation 4 only release in 2016. And probably the biggest announcement for Japan is that. Uh, Sony announced a PlayStation 4 Japanese price drop. No word on the rest of the world yet, but price is going down in Japan a bit. That's cool. Mm hmm So we'll see if... Uh, in a, I imagine at some point it'll go down for the rest of the world too, but... Mm hmm Yeah, neato. Yep. So yeah, that's, uh, that's most of the news that came out of the TGS press conference there. I'm pretty sure a few things IGN skipped over, but uh, yeah. Some very awesome news. I mean, Danganronpa 3. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
lots to look forward to out of that one. Yep. All right, so Big Boss, the next news story. Speaking of PlayStation stuff, uh, Dark Cloud 2 and other PlayStation 2 games are getting PS4 ratings in Europe. <gasps> so, a select few... Uh, P uh, let's start up again. A select few PlayStation Classics ported to the PlayStation 3 have been rated by the Pan-European Game Informer Board for the PlayStation 4, a move that could indicate that Sony plans to bring these games from its last-gen console to the PlayStation 4. Please, 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 please. <laughs> All right. The, game that, uh, the games that receive PS4 ratings are Dark Cloud 2, Ape Escape 2, and Twisted Metal Black. So, uh, these ratings were spawned, uh, spotted by Gematsu, who also points out that Twisted Metal Black has been available as a PS2 classic in Europe since September 2012. So we'll see if uh, Sony is planning on carrying over its line of PlayStation 2 classics to its current gen console. We could hear more about it during the Sony... Per oh, never mind. Ignore that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. That's a... Uh... Yeah, I'm. I really hope this is true. I would love to see PlayStation Two Classics come onto the PlayStation Four store. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet, but it should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same with the Vita. Uh, maybe this is an indication that the games are coming to PlayStation now. Perhaps. Yeah, that would be another possibility for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I would honestly love. If we got a Dark Cloud 2 release on PlayStation 4, that that alone would be awesome. Mm hmm All right. So I guess we can go into our final news story here of this week. Uh, we're rolling through it this week, folks. And that's uh, Nintendo named a new company president. That's right. Nintendo has announced that Tatsumi Kimiyasha, at 65 years old. Tatsumi well, Kimishima. Kimishima, sorry. No worries. Uh, will assume the role of president and representative director for the company. Kimishima's appointment as the new head of Nintendo comes two months after the sudden death of former president Su Satoru Iwata from a cancerous bile duct growth. Iwata was 55. So, previously, Kimishima, I'm going to butcher his name the whole way through this, uh, served as the chief financial officer of the Pokemon Company until 2001. After that, he became the first president of Pokemon USA until 2002. It would eventually grow and be renamed as the Pokemon Company International. He replaced um, Arakawa. I god damn Jeff. You know Arakawa. <laughs> Thank God you're here as president for Nintendo of America in 2002, and he was succeeded by Reggie Fizeme in May of 2006. You handled that one very well. Thank you. <laughs> At the time, he became CEO and chairman of the board until Nintendo of America until he relinquished the position to Iwata in April of 2013. So he, told, he holds several positions at Nintendo, including managing director, general manager of corporate analysis and administration division, and the head of human resources division. So, yeah, that's their uh, new president. Well, I'd say, I mean, I'm no video game official or anything, but those look like pretty solid credentials on his resume. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't think he's going to be as um, fun-loving as Iwata was, but I'm pretty sure the financials, at least, will be in safe hands with him. <laughs> Seems like the corporate side of things. Yeah. But yeah, there you go, Nintendo's new uh, president. Uh, and that uh, pretty much does it for our news stories this week, though there was one more I did want to touch on. Uh, oh. I, I forgot about it until I saw that at the end of this uh, article here. And that's a new Pokemon game got announced. And that's Pokemon Go coming to smartphones in 2016. Yeah, I, I heard about it. I haven't seen anything about it, but I've heard sort of about it. Do mm -hmm. you want to give a bit of a rundown on what you know? Basically, uh, there, it's hard to explain. Um, let's see here. Uh, From what I know, it's, it's, it uses your smartphone in an augmented reality sort of way. Yeah, exactly. You're 
basically going around in the real world. And the app will tell you if like a Pokemon's near. You go in that direction, and it'll be there showing up on your smartphone, and you can try and catch it. <laughs> uh, just looking at an article here on uh, IGN, it says that players will be able to use a separate Bluetooth device for their phone that the Pokemon company is dubbing a Pokemon Go Plus, which is basically a wristband with a Pokeball symbol onto it. This device will alert players to nearby events, such as Pokemon in the vicinity, with flashes and vibrations. Players will be able to catch them with a press of a button. So, yeah, um, is this a sign that Nintendo's about <coughs> to take over the world? <laughs> um, also, I, I don't know if it also means that we can also, they say maybe this could be the Pokemon MMO that we've been waiting for, if we're able to battle other people. You can. Yeah, okay, yeah. I saw this on a friend's wall on Facebook yesterday, so I'm going to take the time to read it because we're making good time. Mm -hmm. And it's a list of things I am going to do when Pokemon Go comes out. <laughs> First off, come up with goofy catchphrases to say before I start a battle and when I win slash lose. <laughs> Number two, ask strangers for their numbers after we battle so I can call them constantly to tell them about how strong my top percentage <laughs> Gratita is. Number three, brush up on my Poke Flute playing skills in case of a Snorlax blocking my path. Number four, start a gym and hand out bandages to people who beat me. Number five, scream, there's a time and a place for everything at people riding bikes in illogical locations. <laughs> Number six, jump out at unsuspecting civilians when they walk, by, or when they walk past to battle. Uh, number seven, blast inspiring Pokemon music when I travel around or battle people. Uh, number eight, cosplay every day. And number nine, lose my entire social life. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> I like the, uh, the Ash Strangers for the numbers. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very good. <laughs> yep, that, that gate. I mean, Nintendo is just getting into the mobile game market, and this is probably the absolute best way for them to come in. They're going in strong. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how you could come up with, you know, better than that. Like, this is... How long have people been wanting a Pokemon MMO? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I do recommend the uh, trailer for the game, too, that's on that IGN article. I'll look it up. Because, yeah, it's... I mean, it goes a little crazy over the top, but it gives you the gist of what can happen on an epic scale. <laughs> and also... As I saw some people tweet out, it's like, Pokemon Go, it's going to be the cause of many people walking out in the middle of traffic. <laughs> mm. It's like, there's a, there's a Snorlax, 500 steps to your right, turn right, bam, car. <laughs> and just remember to look up when you're playing the game. Yep. So yeah, Nintendo will dominate the mobile market. In 2016, uh, probably maybe one of the only few bad mobile games I'll actually download. <laughs> I wonder how that'll work on my iPhone 5s, or or if I am gonna need to update the new 6s for that one. <laughs> hmm. Hopefully, it works on my Xperia. All right, so that's gonna do it for the news this week. So now it's time to move into our topic of the week. Ooh. And, well, nothing really major happened, you know, this past week. We're not going to talk about Destiny, because no, I don't think any of us here on the Glitch State Podcast actually play Destiny anymore. No. Heard it actually has a story now, so good for it. Um, so our topic of the week this week, with the release of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, I thought it would be interesting for us to dive into some of our favorite Open world games. Which is funny because, you know, I briefly talked about that at the start of the podcast. So it all... Yeah, it all ties in full circle. Word. All right. So I think for me, the very first game that really pops into my mind is Grand Theft Auto 3. Okay. Uh, I remember getting that game not knowing what to expect. And you find yourself into this immersive world where you could just drive around, blow shit up, just, it was crazy back at the time, like, yeah. 
that that game really revolutionized the open world genre. No, definitely. And as a result, I'm not going to talk about it because, you know, you brought that one up, so mm-hmm. I'll uh, keep things moving. For Another one that did that for me was uh, back when I got my uh, Xbox 360, I picked up a handful of games. I got it uh, the summer after it had launched. Mm-hmm. There were a few games out for it at that time, so I got three... No, yeah, I got three games for it. I got uh, Dead or Alive 4, because I've always loved the Dead or Alive franchise. Mm-hmm. I got Call of Duty 2 um, before, you know, yearly Call of Duties were a thing. Yeah. And Call of Duty 2 is one of my favorite Call of Duties. I got to say that right now. <laughs> um, and then I also picked up The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. And uh, I didn't, I, I, I knew virtually nothing about The Elder Scrolls. I didn't know anything about any of the previous ones. I had never played or even heard of Morrowind at the time. Um, so I'd, I'd seen limited things of uh, Elder Scrolls for just a few screenshots, and I'm like, this looks like it could be a neat game. Mm-hmm. And so I picked it up not knowing what to expect, and, you know, I make my character, and it's going through the sewers, and it's like, okay, this is cool. And then when you get out of the sewers, and for the first time you get into the open world, out of the prison, and you look around, and it's just like, wait, <laughs> I can go anywhere? <laughs> And then started, I just, you know, started exploring, started swimming through the lake, started wandering through the hills and running into trolls and bandits. And mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Elder Scrolls Four was uh, definitely a favorite open world game for me. And it was just, yeah, that moment when you get out into that huge world, it's like, holy shit, like, that's the big moment when I noticed the huge jump for how much we could do from you know, the PlayStation 2, the GameCube, and the Xbox, to now, this is what the next-gen systems are capable of. And it was like, this Mm -hmm. is awesome. I think the game that did it for me back on the uh, PS3 360 era was the original Assassin's Creed. Loading that one up. Just seeing... Like, when you're in the first city, it's like, okay, this is cool. Kind of reminds me of Grand Theft Auto and whatnot. But I remember that one moment of leaving that city for the very first time, going out on horseback and just seeing the massive open world. Like, holy crap, this place is huge. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Actually, I'd forgotten about the Assassin's Creed games. I played a little bit of one. I couldn't get into it. But as far as, yeah, the open world of that, that was cool. Mm-hmm. And then, but on the subject of, yeah, Assassin's Creed 2 was another excellent open world game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think back at some of the other PlayStation 2 era ones. There's not that many. I mean, we never really got into the boom of open world games until, like, PS3, 360. Yeah, you couldn't do too much. Of course, over on PC, you had, like, Morrowind. <laughs> yeah. and Which also came to the uh, Xbox, actually. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, on your point of the Elder Scrolls, uh, Oblivion never really did it for me, oh. uh, but Skyrim did. Like, Skyrim was the one that blew my mind wide open when it came to their open world style of games. You know, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know what it is about it, but, I mean, I enjoy Skyrim, mm-hmm. but I love Oblivion. Mm-hmm. There's just something about it that... I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I really can't. But just something about Oblivion, I just... I love about that game. Maybe it's the first... Because it was the first open-world game that, you know, other than GTA, that just completely shattered my mind like that. Mm-hmm. It does hold a special place in my heart. Yeah. But, yeah, it was... But, no, Skyrim is another obvious example of open-worlds. Mm-hmm. Sure. What else? Like, I know... We'll skip away from MMOs, because that's... Yeah. That's a very different type of open world. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, uh, there's GTA 4 and 5. Yeah. San Andreas, Life City. Mm-hmm. All of which improved upon one another. Yeah, they just gradually, step by step, saw them get better and better as far as the the open world mm-hmm. itself. Um, one we cannot uh, not mention, Minecraft. Oh, shit, yeah. That's... that's Especially because that you know, really turned the whole open world thing 
completely on its head and mm -hmm. reinvented it in ways that no one would have thought of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one on the PlayStation 3, which comes in my mind, uh, kind of in the same vein as Grand Theft Auto, but upping the crazy level to 11, Just Cause 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and which Just Cause 3 is right around the corner and looks to be upping that even more. <laughs> and then I suppose we can also mention Far Cry. Yep. Uh, those games uh, kind of took the first-person shooter and truly made it an open-world one. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Far Cry. Uh, uh, the Batman games, Arkham yeah. City and Arkham Knight most recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the evolution of that franchise was more of a contained open world, this one area, a Metroid style, if you will, and then evolved it into an open world series, which did extremely well and was extremely good. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Witcher, as we mentioned earlier this year. Yeah. That uh, that defined open world in a whole new way. Yeah. <laughs> There's a billion things you can do at once. <laughs> a little too open for my taste. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then you know what? And uh, like, not to, we won't take anything away from it, but Destiny as well. Like, there's your big worlds that you repeatedly visit mm -hmm. yeah um where everything will... open except the citadel <laughs> yeah um let's see here well watch dogs as well but i wouldn't consider that a favorite open world game <laughs> either um, e even though it had good ideas but yeah yeah i and then I don't think Mass Effect is as open world. No. No, no. It's more just the RPG with like yeah. worlds, but it's not full on wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to mention like some of the older Final Fantasies too, which technically I guess are open world games, but. Yeah, no, I know. I was thinking about that too, like with, you know, like when you first leave Midgar in Final Fantasy VII, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I. I to me, that's just kind of the staple of an RPG. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to a full-on open world sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Where you could go and just... Just do it. Yeah. yeah. Where there's still a linear progression, more or less, of Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Mass Effect or Knights of the Old Republic or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, Skyrim and, you know, GTA. I mean, there's the linear progression of the story... Mm -hmm. But you can just go wherever the hell you want. Yep. No matter what. Mm -hmm. I can walk uh, right into an oblivion gate at it. <laughs> I don't have to wait till the story tells me to. Exactly, yeah. Um, one of the games that... Another one that comes to my mind, one that probably revolutionized open world on handheld systems, the Pokemon series. Yeah, no, that's true. That's very true. It's probably one of the earliest open world games you can really think of. Mm -hmm. Even though it kind of has that same linear approach as most RPGs do, you can do like a shit ton of stuff in those games outside of just battling Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And when you consider how you know how much there was to those games, despite you know how old they are mm -hmm. and how you know. The technology was at the time like it's very impressive yep and i guess we can uh, mention as well middle gear solid 5 and its approach to open world games where they give you a mission and you go about it any way you want to mm -hmm. using the tools that they've given you uh actually on the note of that sort of style um i guess we could even throw back to the old hitman games oh yeah 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 I mean, though have... i wouldn't really consider them really open no, that's, world. Yeah, that, that's just more open in terms of how you complete a mission. The yeah. World itself. Yeah. It's like you can't just stop a mission and go play poker for like five hours. No. You just have the complete freedom to do a mission however you choose. Mm -hmm. I guess also I've never played them, but I guess the Arma games would also be. Yeah. Daisy, I guess. 
Dead Rising. Mm -hmm. or, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dead Island. Mm -hmm. Oh, a great example, yeah. Yeah. Completely forgot about those. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but uh, there are a ton of great open world games, folks, uh, and the genre is only increasing even further now. It seems to be the main focus of uh, a lot of games. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and PC these days. Because they have the power to do it now. <laughs> and so they make longer games that I'm never going to get the chance to beat. Exactly. And Final Fantasy XV looks to be going that route as well. No, oh, don't do that to me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, I guess that's going to do it for our topic of the week this week. So we can move briefly into questions and comments. And I'm not going to throw it up here on screen, but... Uh, our friend Ozzy Legend actually sent us a question, and it was, How large of an erection did Roger have after the TGS stream? Half chub or full chub? Well, I love me some Danganronpa and Star Ocean, so... Wink. And this is the Glitched Out podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Probably... You I, had a question as well? Uh, quickly, before that we move on, I just have to ask, in relation to that, not like that, that, but, you know, um, <laughs> did you did you wake up to watch it, or did you just catch up after the fact? Oh, I woke up to watch it. I set an alarm for 4 a.m. in the morning. Huh? So I, I basically slept for two and a half hours, woke up, watched the stream, went back to bed again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I had to ask that much, so. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I had a question uh, in common. Or not a comment. Uh, just uh, that sort of ties in a little bit. Um, just about what are some of our favorite moments in gaming, whether it be you know a boss battle or a, a feeling that a certain game has given you, stuff like that. So I think we can discuss a little bit of that. Hmm. Um, I'll say one that really comes to my mind right now. Uh, it happened last year, uh, playing Persona 4 Golden on the Vita. Uh, the very last moment in that game where you're actually... The, the main character is saying goodbye to the other characters before getting aboard a train and going back to his home city. That moment was really beautiful. It actually made me tear up and starting to feel a little bit now while just remembering it. But it was such a beautiful moment, just giving you a chance to say goodbye to these characters before the game wrapped up. So, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's one that really stands out in my mind right now. Okay. Uh, what about yourself? Um, for me, well, I was going to include, uh, actually, on subject of open world games, one of those magical moments, yeah, was uh, in Oblivion when you get out of the prison and you look at that open world. That mm -hmm. was one of those one of my favorite moments in gaming. Another one, similarly, is uh, in Halo. When you first get off the uh, Pillar of Autumn and you land on Halo, mm -hmm. and you just look around and it's just huge. <laughs> it's like, whoa. So that was another kind of magical moment for me. But one that's uh, not just related to big worlds, maybe kind of it. Well, it's not specifically a big world, but uh, in uh, the first God of War game, when you're, uh, there were so many great moments in that, but one of them was, uh, I really felt it when you were climbing up uh, along Pandora's Temple on Kronos' back, mm -hmm. and you really got a size of the scale of this game, and you know, like, and the chains that hold the, you know, uh, the temple to his back are like shaking, and uh, they're like when when they slam against the. Uh, the temple it like vibrates your controller and then you see how tiny Kratos is mm -hmm. compared to the temple, compared to Kronos, compared to the whole world. And it just it without being an open world game, it really gives you the sense of scale and how huge the you know, and like the magnitude of what Kratos' quest was in that yeah. and that was kind of this awesome moment. Like God of War, the original one, was just chock full of those incredible moments that really oh it really it was a great game mm -hmm. so that would be yeah that it's a simple moment but really captured what video gaming is about mm -hmm. nice nice 
I'm trying to think about some other ones for myself. All of them. Um, solid three and four. All of them. Every <laughs> single moment of the games. Including the, including the three-minute ladder climb in Snake Eater. <laughs> um, okay, I got two more, and this is going with Japanese games again. Uh, one of which I think you will absolutely agree with me on. Uh, Final Fantasy VII where you're searching after Ares in the, uh, the Ancients place. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the uh, you go, yeah. Forest of the Ancients, yeah, and you finally find her. She's there praying, and, well, spoiler alert if you haven't played it, but who fucking cares at this point? <laughs> and, like Darth Vader and Luke's dad. We, yeah, we know. yeah. Uh, and Sephiroth drops down and plunges his sword through her. That That was an incredible emotional moment. So you didn't know that Eris died? At the time when I played it? No. Oh, lucky. Yeah. I, that spoiled for me before I even started playing Final Fantasy VII back in, like, 99. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I played it in 99, too, and I avoided that spoiler for two years. But wow. back then, well, you know, the internet wasn't really that relevant. See, my friends who gave me the game, they're like, oh, yeah, but... And she, yeah, they're showing me all the characters. Like, yeah, he's my favorite, he's my favorite. She dies. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, no big deal. We're 10 year olds. We don't know, or, you know, we don't yeah. know better. And... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And it was at that time, too, I think. Uh, I had been out of JRPGs for a while, so I wasn't paying attention to, like, anything on those games. And I believe my brother picked it up, and I was like, uh, this looks okay. And, well, <laughs> got hooked anyway, long story short. But, yeah, that moment stands out for me. And another more recent moment for me, last year, uh, God, all of mine are like emotional moments that really oh. struck me. Um, Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. And this was just like an off-shot moment. Like, not everybody would get this moment while playing through the game. And that's, in the Danganronpa games, you can build up these relationships with characters. And you can do it with any of the characters, so... You know, at this one point, I decided to focus on this one chick. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say anymore because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Uh, I might have already have, but sorry. Uh, I focus on this one character doing all of, like, the side stuff, building up a relationship with her. And, you know, she's crazy. She's over the top. She's dragging the main character all around, like, just trying to get him to spend time with her, basically. And this is what you think. And the very last moment that you have with her is her telling him, you know, he doesn't need the change because she likes him for the way he is. And that's great. It's like, oh, that's that's so very cute. Uh, that was really emotional. I love that. And like, you get to see this other side of this character that if you just play the game normally, you would not see. And, of course, the next murder is her. Oh. And... For me, at that point, it was like, I, I, for most people, it might be, oh, okay, solve this murder now. For me, I couldn't take it because, for me, I had just lost a friend. <laughs> like, that hit me so hard, that murder trial did. I actually had to put down the game for a day before I came back and had the nerve to actually solve her murder. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that that one and there are so many moments like that in the dang and rampa games that can hit you really hard and just give you this amazing emotional experience mm -hmm. yeah the walking dead was like that as well i was, I was gonna say I'm, you know on the subject of emotional moments i gotta say both season one and two of uh, the walking dead the telltale walking dead games mm-hmm Specifically, uh, the final episodes in both of those yeah the final uh, without going into spoilers the final episode of episode one was just Gut wrenching, mm -hmm. and the final episode in episode two faced me with one of the most difficult moments I've ever had in a game, mm -hmm. because there was a choice that had to be made in this game, and I knew exactly what I had to do. I knew exactly what I had like. There was no questions. I knew what I had to do, mm -hmm. but it was the hard like it was the hardest thing for me to do it because I didn't want to do it. Yep. And it was it's that, that style of moment where you know you, there's only one real choice, but when it's so difficult to make, to actually go through with it, it's like, 
this is just a video game. <laughs> but damn. Yep. So yeah, Walking the Walking Dead. I'm 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 keeping that as vague as possible because I don't want to spoil any of how incredible those games are for uh, anyone playing them. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's uh, definitely play them. I can't stress that enough. Mm-hmm. All right, so I guess that's going to do it for our questions and comments section. I can't think of any other moments. Like I said, Metal Gear Solid 3 and 4 were just filled with moments. Mm-hmm. I Yeah, emotionally, they are incredible. Power yep. games get me every time I play them. <laughs> uh, oh, right. and uh, on the subject of that, The Last of Us. Mm, mm, yeah. And actually, and to end on a happy note, <laughs> the uh, in uh, Uncharted 2, the whole, uh, there are so many moments of just how incredible this, again, coming back to like the scale of those games and just the, you know, Murphy's Law is in full effect for Nathan Drake. <laughs> yep. And uh, I'm trying to th- recall some key moments offhand, but that whole, Come on, the, the train sequence. Yeah, no, I was going to say, the whole train segment, everything about it was great. You know, from climbing on the back of that train and battling along the roof. and Oh, no, no, no. The highlight for me in that game was the tank battle. When you're in the village, mm-hmm. you're just trying to survive the tank and, like, none of your guns are working on it. Because, I mean, it's a fucking tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're not solid snake. You can't just kill it with grenades. Um and, you know, you're trying everything just to not die. It's just like this uphill, futile battle the entire time where you're going cover to cover and it's just everything's getting blown up. You're trying to fight off guys. And then finally at the end, you finally get an RPG and finally put away the tank and just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> that was that was a, a top moment from that game. Mm-hmm. So there we go. There's a, there's an uplifting moment in contrast with all the emotional moments we share. <laughs> Yep. All right. So that pretty much does it for the podcast this week, folks. Um, of course, you can find us on Twitter. I am at the underscore Lord X. Big Boss is at the underscore Highwing 32. Yeah. Okay. Got it right. You can also find me at the University of Alberta, where I am a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> and even though they're not here with us this week, uh, you can find ECW James at, at, at House underscore Rage. And Izzy at Israel Pacheco 89 on Twitter as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching this week, and Big Boss, take us away. Well, thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Glitched Out, the descendant of the Canuck podcast. Uh, if you have any questions or comments for future episodes, please let us know in the comments below, uh, and we'll answer them next time on the podcast. Well, maybe I won't, because we'll don't know if I'll be around. <laughs> um so thank you for again for tuning in. I've been Big Boss, and with me, as always, is your host, Lord X. Uh, so we'll see you again next time, whenever that may be. Until then, you stay classy and keep gaming. And we are glitching out. <laughs>